Hi, this is Tim Stapleton from GT Automotive in South Jordan, Utah. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to discuss the computer system in your vehicle and what it can and cannot do. What prompted me to make this video was an infomercial that I saw on Facebook. And maybe you've seen it too. It starts out by implying that all auto mechanics are ripoff artists and how you should buy his little code reader so that you won't get ripped off if your check engine light comes on. And it goes on to imply that this little tool can tell you exactly what's wrong with your car, so there's no need to pay a mechanic to diagnose your vehicle. Oh, that life could be so simple. <laughs> it would be like having a little tool to stick your finger in and have that thing tell you everything that's wrong with you, with your body. And it would be really nice and maybe someday we'll have it, I don't know. but. Right now, it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, there's no magic tool that can tell you exactly what's wrong with your vehicle either. And just like your computer at home can give you suggestions and things to try to troubleshoot itself, your car's computer can tell you what areas to look at for the problem, but it can't tell you exactly what the problem is. For example, if your check engine light comes on and gives you a code, say a P420 code, your code reader may say oxygen sensor, so you go out and replace your car's oxygen sensor. It might fix it, but it very well may not. Why? Because the computer cannot tell if the oxygen sensor is bad. It can just tell if the signal is getting to the computer or not. The problem can be an oxygen sensor or a bad wire to the computer or a bad fuel injector or an ignition problem or a leaky exhaust system causing the sensor to give the computer information that would put it outside of its normal parameters and cause your check engine light to come on. So here is how your car's computer system works. This is an automotive computer. The average vehicle has 30 to 50 different computers or modules in it. High-end cars may have as many as 100, along with 60 to 100 sensors, giving the computer information for it to base its decisions on. Starting in 1996, all vehicles sold in the U.S. had to be equipped with second generation of an onboard diagnostic, or OBD2. This meant that car manufacturers had to make available to anyone repairing the vehicle certain information about the car's computer sensors and actuators. What prompted this law was emissions related. Without this information, cars could be running around emitting large amounts of pollutants into the air. So your car has many sensors in it, speed sensors, oxygen sensors, temperature sensors, etc. All of these sensors are connected to your vehicle's computer. The computer takes all of the information and decides how much fuel to put into the engine, when the spark plug should fire, how many RPMs the engine should idle at, and on and on. So a computerized scan tool can be plugged into your vehicle's computer link, and that scan tool can display an array of information to help the technician to diagnose the vehicle's problem that set the check engine light on in the first place. Unlike a simple code reader, these scan tools cost thousands of dollars. Here is an example of how this might all play out. Here is a 2017 Toyota Tacoma. There are over 800 codes built into this truck's computer system. The most common code for this particular truck is a PO418, Secondary Air Injection System Control A circuit is what it's called. Now on your on a little code reader, it might just say air injection pump. And so there are pages and pages of tests to perform in order to determine the cause of the computer setting that code. The possible solutions are open pump drive circuit, a short between the air pump drive circuit and the positive B circuit, the air pump itself, the air injection control driver, or the computer. By the way, the ECM is the same as a computer. It may also be called a PCM, an ECU, a BCM. There are lots of acronyms for them. But they all reference the same thing, one of the vehicle's many onboard computers. Well, let's say you want to take charge of this repair and make sure you're not getting ripped off by the technician. So you go out and buy an air pump assembly. After all, that is the name of that code. 
Then you ask the shop to install the part for you. You just spent $697.94 on an air pump, plus whatever the labor is. You pick up your car and the check engine light is out because the shop reset the light, which is what they should have done. Two days later, though, the light is back on and you don't know why. Now, on top of what you've already spent, you're going to have to have the problem properly diagnosed and repaired. There's no savings doing that. So you can go out and buy a code reader advertised on Facebook or one of the other media, or go to an auto parts store where they will pull the code for free in hopes of selling you the parts that you think it needs in order to fix that code. Or you can visit an independent repair shop where they will also pull the codes most of the time for free, which is what we do here. But now you can have the problem properly diagnosed and the correct parts installed to get your vehicle running clean and strong. Now, when I say we'll pull the codes for free, that is true, but we don't diagnose it for free because of all the tests and time it takes to perform those operations. Same thing with the auto parts store. They don't diagnose it for you either. And uh, anybody else or, or trying to do it yourself with a code reader isn't going to tell you exactly what's wrong either. It's just going to tell you what circuit it is or, or where to look. So, well, thank you for listening and I hope you got something out of this video. Next month, we're going to do a segment on how to choose a repair shop. Hope you can join us then.